Hello team and welcome to episode 6, Enter the Year of the Dragon. Any Bruce Lee fans out there, I hope you got the reference. But why am I mentioning this? Because we are, according to the Chinese Zodiac, about to enter the Year of the Dragon. Uh, 2024 is the Year of the Metal Dragon, if I am not mistaken. And while I'm not the most devout believer in any of these, these specific customs, I do love learning about different cultures and beliefs. And we're about to start the new Chinese year. And I thought we could bring some of these themes to our class today. We will be continuing with our tense review. Today is class two. Uh, last class, we talked about the past. This week, we will be talking about the future. And uh, this is actually a one of my favorite classes because when I started teaching English at an English school, I, they asked me to to pick a theme to, to talk about. And I opened up the book. I found going to and will. I was like, yeah, you know, I can teach this. So it's one of my my one of the first classes I've I taught. And you'll see that it's actually pretty easy. The future time in English is one of the easiest. And today I want you to leave this class knowing the difference between going to and will. So here is the Chinese Zodiac. You can find yours. If you want to learn a little bit more, you can hear about the great race and how these animals were picked. I also think it's pretty cool that the, their Zodiac is in layers. So we have our yearly animal, which is the kind of the, the way your peers are seen. Then you have your, your monthly animal, which would be how uh, people who know you superficially um, see you. And then we have your, your day, which is how people who know you well, your family and your friends see you. And your the hour you were born gives you your inner secret you. So I did think that was kind of cool. And, you know, take a look. What is your Chinese zodiac sign? And my first question for you is why do so many people enjoy astrology? It is a, I'm going to guess, billion dollar industry. I know there's a, a lot of money in astrology. I know a lot of people. A lot of intelligent people who follow it. So what are your thoughts? Why do so many people like to look at the stars for their answers? And last up, this is just to test how you answer this with your going to's and your wills. How is your year of the dragon going to be defined? Is it going to be a year of work? Will it be the year that you run a marathon? Are you going to aim to be more relaxed for a more... Um, agitated year, how will your year of the dragon be defined? Now let us get to our grammar point, going to and will. There are a few other ways to communicate in the future, but really going to and will, they're going to be your bread and butter. They will be the main ways that you use to communicate in the future. Realistically, if you can use just going to well, you can pretty much communicate everything. But we will see some of the nuance, some of the differences, and hopefully, you will leave this class being able to express whatever you want in the future. And like, like usual, I'm going to compare this in three ways, starting with intention versus spontaneity. What do I mean by this? If an action involves some deliberation, you think about something it should be going to. Um, I'm going to travel to, to Europe. Um, I'm going to eat a cake later. Um, I'm going to, to study a lot this year. So whenever you have some planning, some deliberation, um, you usually use going to. Now, will. It's used for spontaneous decisions. It's more reactionary. What do I mean by this? The doorbell rings. I wasn't planning on it. I'll go answer it. Um, if, if the phone rings, you know, I didn't know that somebody was going to call me, so I'll answer the phone. If I, let some, if I spill some water on the ground, I'll go get the mop and clean it up. So, going to some planning. Will, it's more of an instant, a spontaneous decision. Number two, this is for predictions. Um, this one I consider a little bit less important than the first example, but we use going to for predictions based on present evidence. Think of Sherlock Holmes, where you look around and you say, this is going to happen. And imagine I look outside, I see some gray clouds, I hear that vroom, vroom, you know, thunder rumbling, the window's starting to shake a little bit. I can probably guess that it's going to rain. 
Now, Will, Will is more of an, an emotional prediction. Will is like a, a soccer fan. My team will win. How do you know? I have no idea, but I believe they will win. So in this example, I think she will pass the test. Why? Because I like her and I hope she passes. But maybe if I had seen her study, I'd say, you know, Maria is going to pass because I use the evidence. I saw her studying, and that is why I, th I think she is going to pass. Realistically, I think your tone of voice, for all of these, your tone of voice is what's most important. Um, also, these padding words, like I think, I think she will pass the test and she will pass the test. They sound a little bit different. So it seems like, it looks like, I think, I hope, remember that these padding words make a big difference as well. Number three is the most important tip I can give you today. You leave this class remembering one thing, this is it. Which is that going to is more informal in conversation. It's like December 31st when everybody is going to do millions of things next year. I'm going to win a million dollars. I'm going to travel the world. I'm going to, um, to lose weight. I'm going to stick to my diet. And I'm going to do all of those things. And it's, it's a smaller commitment. It's okay. I don't want to say it's okay, but it's, it's more acceptable if it doesn't happen. With will, it sounds stronger. And especially for my students who are here for a professional, um, you know, for professional reasons, I think this makes a difference because if you say, I will resolve your problem, the person will believe you. But if you say, we're going to resolve your problems, like, eh, I, I think I might need to call and check on them later. So remember that. You can also even increase the intensity. You know, are you going to do this? I will do this. So you can make it stronger um, should that be your desire. Now with the form, I'm going to go right to the mistakes. So we're going to, going to do, going to eat, going to sleep, going to watch, going, going, to, going to go exists. And no matter what, you're going to have going to plus the base form of the verb. Where do I usually hear mistake? It's before, with the to be. Especially native speakers, they're kind of subtle with this. I'm going to work a lot this year. You kind of almost miss the am. I'm going to work. What I hear from my students is just completely ignoring. I going to work, you going to work. So remember, get your to be right and the rest will fall into place. I am going, you are going, and the rest is all the same. It's the first mistake that I see. The second mistake that I see a lot is with will. Because with going, you always need that two afterwards. With will, you cannot have the two afterwards. So sometimes I will hear, a, I will to work, I will to do, I will to eat. No. If you use the word will, remember that the, the next verb, because it is a modal verb, it helps another verb, will always be in the base form. Will work, will do, will eat, will sleep. All right? And number three, the third mistake that I hear is with the negative form, where I, I will sometimes hear, I don't will, um, I willn't, but won't seems to disappear from my students' minds sometimes. Remember, um, it's a mixture of will with don't, won't. Let me see what else do I have for you guys. Some qu bonus questions to practice, then add your own, which are always the most important. And our third activity, we're going to play some Simpsons. And here I included a list of some of the predictions that the Simpsons have made throughout the years. But what do you think? What will happen this year, this year of the dragon, 2024? What are your predictions? Um, the, you can go for the serious, the fun ones, the silly ones, whatever you want. Now, your challenge, turn a going to into a will. So what's something you said you were going to do this year? Let's turn it into a will. Let's make it real. Yes, not all of these exercises are directly English. And your extra credit. Um, this is a teaser for one of our future classes. Like I mentioned, there are other ways to communicate in the future. I am going to Salvador. I am going to go to Salvador. What's the difference? I'll already give you the answer. Skip to the bottom. So, and here I switched to a Scotland original, but um, it's, it's fine for the example. This is actually the present continuous form. And what's weird about English is that we can use this present continuous to talk about the future. If I say, I'm going to watch a movie, eh, you know, if something better appears, I'll, I'll do that. If I say, I will watch a movie, maybe I've been putting it off, I need to finish this movie, I will watch this movie on Friday. But if I say, I am watching a movie on Friday, I probably already bought the tickets and maybe got the, the, 
popcorn combo. And when we use the present continuous, normally with an anchor word in the future, it means that the commitment is really um, underway. It has already started. So for example, when I say I'm going to Salvador, even if it's not tomorrow, I've probably already bought the ticket. It's already a plan in motion. Well, I'm going to go to Salvador is an intention. You know, you know, it'd be awesome. I've always wanted to go there. It's true. Um, I, I would love to go to Salvador. So one day, hopefully, I am going to go to Salvador. But I don't really have any, any plan in motion. So let me pick one of the conversation starters. Ooh, Jackie Chan Adventures. And I, I don't know. Um, I hope you've seen it because it was a great cartoon. Um, I watched it here in Brazil, actually. I think I watched more Jackie Chan Adventures. Actually, I think I only watched Jackie Chan Adventures here in Brazil. But I, I'm always a big proponent of fun with our English practice. So if you want to... You be did not make coffee this morning. Coffee is the only thing keeping Uncle's ancient heart beating. You want... Some Jackie Chan Adventures for you. And let me pick a converse. Oh, that was the conversation starter. What was your favorite Zodiac power? Oof. I need to remember one of them. I should have picked a different question. I don't remember the Zodiac powers. Um, but I, 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 will, I will add that later. Next up, vocab to avoid. Uh, I did not think this was a complicated word, but a lot of my students did not recognize it. So to avoid is when you try to keep something away or you stop doing something. Um, um, you might be avoiding, avoiding sugar this year, or you might be avoiding a person. You might be avoiding João, so you don't have to see. But team, um, that is it. Last up, a quote from Mr. Bruce. Knowing is not enough. We must apply. Willing is not enough. We must do. And we'll add the English version, which is reading is not enough. You must speak. All right? Team, thank you. Uh, I will see you in class, hopefully. and. That's it.